Hello, it's me, French Ted, and we are here for episode number 85, and we are now in June. Uh, the beginning of June, but the final Dynamite before the Grand Prix final. There will be more matches announced for that show, and one that I forgot at the end of the last episode was the rematch between Brian Danielson and Daniel Garcia for the World Light Heavyweight Championship. How on earth could I have forgotten that? Um, but that is also happening at the Grand Prix final, and it will be uh, referenced in today's episode. Um, but yeah, we are here for Dynamite very excited for uh, what's to come in this episode i'm hoping it'll be a good one so let's not waste any time and let's just head straight into it we've got two pre-show matches the first one is against La well lance archer facing off against luchasaurus um, and in decent pre-show match it's lance archer that gets the win he wins via the blackout uh, lance with a 70 luchasaurus with a 60 uh, christian cage is obviously still uh, managing luchasaurus as well as the um you quote unquote manager of Aussie Open at the moment. Um, whether Aussie Open want that or not, who knows? Uh, but yeah, decent little pre show match here. And then the next one, oh, a 74. Wow, Kyrie with an 83. Go on, Kyrie. I think we're going to have to start booking her a little bit more seriously. Uh, but in a decent pre show match, it is Kyrie that gets the win over Steph Delander. Uh, obviously, Matt Cardona ringside with his uh, indie queen. Uh, Kyrie wins with the insane elbow 83 performance death with a 55 not the best but hey ho Kyrie is uh, definitely one to keep an eye on um, after this though we do head to the main show and it is Aussie Open opening the show against Kenta and Chris Bay two members of Bullet Club Gold um, and Aussie Open get the win in a bout that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd when Carl Fletcher pins Kenta, who is still in extremely poor form uh, with the Tombstone pile driver. Uh, Mark Davis with an 86. Wow. Carl Fletcher a little bit lower now with a 79. Uh, Chris Bay in the high 60s and Kenta with a 65. I cannot wait for Kenta's poor form to be over and done with because I feel like he's going to be good. I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait. Uh, 81 overall, another great win for Aussie Open. They have been doing extremely well over the last month or so. And post-match, Christian, you know, their manager, um, grabs the microphone and says that he believes that his clients, Carl Fletcher and Mark Davis, should be next in line for the World Tag Team Championships. Whoever wins out of Hangman Page and Bandido and the Golden Lovers, Aussie Open should be next in line. And the crowd seemed to be pretty uh, okay about that until a certain two broskies interrupt. Yep, MJF and Matt Cardona, the best broskies, come down to the ring and they say, whoa, 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 whoa. If we're talking about what duos deserve to be at the top of the card, look no further than MJF and Matt Cardona. Uh, we should be the number one contenders and we will prove it any day, any night, any time. Um, to which Nigel McGuinness then comes out and says, oh, very interesting, uh, Maxwell and Matt. How about we do this? We've still got, you know, a few slots to fill on the Grand Prix card. Let's do a four-way tag team match um, for the number one contendership of the AEW World Tag Team Championships. Kyle, Mark, you guys have more than proved yourself. And I will also include, you know, two other tag teams who have more than improved, uh, more than proved themselves as well over the last month or so. And that final slot, Max and Matt, will be yours if the best broskies can defeat the best friends in our main event later on tonight. So our main event has been set by Nigel McGuinness. It is MJF and Matt Cardona taking on Trent Beretta and Chucky T, the best friends against the best broskies. The winner will be inserted into that four-way number one contenders match this Sunday at the Grand Prix final. Um, I'm just trying to think who the other members are because I have already pre-booked it on my spreadsheet. I believe the other members include um, two members of the Combat Club, and I think High Five have been thrown in there as well because they've been doing really good stuff on Dark. 
Um, so yeah, Aussie Open, high five. Two members of the combat club. If Yuta's available, I might bring Yuta in. Um, because I know that he's close to being fit, so it'll probably be Zack Sabre Jr. And, and Utah, or Zack Sabre Jr. and Shane Haste, um, and then the winner of tonight's main event. Uh, but of course, at the end of Collision, in our next episode, I'll confirm the full card for uh, the Grand Prix final. Uh, but moving on, we've got some singles action. It's Hikaru Shida taking on Jade Cargill's lackey, uh, Layla Gray. And about that had decent wrestling, but not much heat. Hikaru Shida carries this eight minute match um, and defeats Layla Gray with the Tamashi. <laughs> um, Jade Cargill does some good work at ringside, you know, trying to distract Hikaru Shida as often as possible. Layla Gray is not an in-ring wrestler. Uh, she is simply the manager of Jade Cargill, but she can go in the ring if she needs to. Um, but of course, Hikaru Shida gets the win and post-match, Jade Cargill helps uh, Layla Gray out the ring and kind of just shoots on Shida for a while, just being like, you know, your time is up. Um, you probably feel honoured being the IWGP Women's Champion, but I'm going to make history by defeating you and becoming the longest reigning undefeated IWGP Women's Champion, just like I did with the TBS title when it was a thing. So Jade Cargill already going down in history as probably the best TBS champion of all time, um, and she's planning on doing the exact same thing with the IWGP Women's title, should she defeat Hikaru Shida at the Grand Prix final. Following on from this, we have got a face-off. It is Brian Danielson and Brie Garcia facing off against Daniel Garcia and Mercedes Monet, and they just exchange some words. You know, Brian has got nothing but respect for Daniel, whereas Daniel's respect for Brian is just slowly becoming less and less as the weeks progress. You know, he wants that rematch. He's had to be patient and wait, and he will finally get it this Sunday. Mercedes Monet and Brie also have their shit to say. Um, Mercedes hyping about how Brian, not how, how Daniel Garcia is going to make Brian Danielson tap out, and then Brie coming back and saying, no, Brian Danielson is a master of submission. He will make Daniel Garcia tap out. And this kind of argument leads to a huge stipulation being added because in my eyes, in their eyes, one submission isn't enough. So they have agreed to make their World Light Heavyweight Championship match an ultimate submission match. Now, for those of you that aren't aware what that is, it's essentially an Iron Man match. However, you can only get wins or points, we should say, by submission. Daniel Garcia, as we know, has got a number of submissions under his belt. The same with Brian Danielson. He's got a number as well. So this will be, hopefully, one hell of a technical masterclass. 30 minutes, ultimate submission. The winner coming out with the AEW World Light Heavyweight Championship. And Mercedes Monet and Brie Garcia, I'm sure, will be ringside for this as well. So it should be a very interesting match. After this, though, uh, we head backstage and we can see CM Punk is on the phone to Jay White. Jay White still recovering from his injury, but CM Punk is talking to him on the phone and we can hear CM Punk saying things like, really sorry, I couldn't win the tournament for you. Um, I did my best. You know, throw shade at Juice Robinson saying, don't worry, I'm going to get my revenge on him. You've got nothing to worry about, White. You just rest up. Bullet Club Gold is in safe hands. You know, me being the leader now, you haven't got to worry about a single thing. Um, you know, Kenta and Bay are great. Soraya and AJ are in action later. You just focus on your recovery. And when you're back, me and you will go for gold together. Um, so, yeah, Punk still being the really nice, you know, hey, buddy, kind of thing for Jay White. It seems like the offer to bring Jay White back into Bullet Club Gold was a sincere one. Um, but, of course, Juice Robinson still has his reservations uh, regarding both of them, to be honest. After this segment, though, we do head into the ring, and that match that was previously mentioned by Punk is happening. It is AJ Mendes and Soraya of Bullet Club Gold taking on the team of Shayna Baszler and Paige Van Zandt, two MMA specialists. Um, and in this match, it is AJ and Soraya that get the win. They defeat Paige Van Zandt and Baszler in 13 minutes when AJ pins Shayna Baszler with a shining wizard. Um, and a win for AJ is great. You know, she came in as a great... Uh, women's world champion uh, late last year I believe it was um, but hasn't really done much since dropping the belt 
um, Soraya with a 59, AJ 63, pretty good, Shayna with a 56, which is pretty good seeing as though she's off her game, Paige Van Zandt, yeah, Paige Van Zandt, <laughs> um, following this random tag team match that I threw in, we have got a backstage segment, and Jake Roberts has got three of his four family members here, and there's a reason why he's just got the three of them, and it's because he says, Drew, you were excellent at the All-In Grand Prix. You unfortunately could not get the win over Volta, but that's understandable. Volta is a force of nature. We haven't had time to study the man. You will get your revenge soon. FTR, you want to be in that tag team tournament, that tag team four-way? And they're like, yeah, of course you do. And he's like, well, too bad. You're not in it. And they're both like, what? What do you mean, Jake, huh? I thought you had our back. I thought you had this. And Jake's like, because the three of you the Roberts family of Drew Galloway, Dax Harwood, and Cash Wheeler instead have a World Trios titles match at Grand Prix. I've spoken to Tony Khan and it's happening. It's official. La Faxion taking on the Roberts family. Winner takes all. And those frowns from, you know, FTR have very quickly turned upside down because now they have the chance at Trios Gold with Drew Mac uh, not Drew McIntyre, oh, Drew Galloway, who has been insanely good recently. So the team of Andrade, Roosh, and Sammy Guevara better watch their back because, you know, they've got to take on this trio. And Jake Roberts has built a very formidable family that could get their first taste at gold before the end of the week. And that match is official for the All In Grand Prix. It will be the Roberts family taking on La Faxion for those AEW World Trios titles. After this though, we've got a simple one-on-one. -on -one. Miro does not want to rest. He is angry at his performance and he just wanted someone to chuck about. Unfortunately, that man was El Fantasmo, who has recently, you know, come up to the main roster. And in about that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, Miro defeats El Fantasmo in eight minutes with the game over. Welcome to the main roster, El Fantasmo, says Miro. Um, they've got good chemistry as well, which is very interesting. Miro with an 88, though. Oh, we've got so many top stars now. It's going to be so hard to, you know, keep them all happy and give them all things to do. And yeah. Um, but yeah, just a simple, you know, all out brawl where Miro just completely decimates El Fantasmo. After this, though, Renee is speaking to our A block winner, the man that many people seem to fear based on his recent performances, Volta. And Rene just says, Volta, you know, congratulations. Undefeated in the All In Grand Prix. You must feel incredible. You must have so much, you know, confidence going into the final this Sunday. And Volta says, no, I am not feeling that way. I'm angry. I'm embarrassed. And she's like, what? And he's like, I may have gone undefeated in my block matches, but I lost twice in exhibition matches. Kenny, the man I will face at the final, pinned me in an exhibition bout. The current world champion, John Moxley, defeated me in exhibition bout. Those are the two men that should not have got a win over Volta. So this Sunday, I am not confident. I am not worried. I am focused. And Kenny Omega will feel what the nine men before him felt. And after that, John Moxley, should he still be champion by the time All Out comes around, will feel what Kenny feels this Sunday. And yeah, nice powerful promo from Volta. Uh, he says he doesn't feel confident. He feels pretty fucking confident, let's be honest. Um, and yeah, that will be our main event for the Grand Prix Final, Volta taking on the B-Block winner, Kenny Omega. The winner going to All Out to face whoever the AEW World Heavyweight Champion is at that point. At the moment, it is John Moxley, but that could change. You know, we've got many months until uh, we've got June, July, August, September is when All Out is. So we've got a good three months worth of competition before then. A nice 91 segment. Volta is great on the mic, as is good old Rene Paquette. Uh, this, I believe, takes us to our main event now. So it's the best broskies of MJF and Matt Cardona taking on the best friends of Trent Beretta and Chucky e. T. 
and oh, an 89. Wow, in a bout that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. It is the best broskies who win. They defeat the best friends in 18 minutes when MJF makes Chucky T tap with the salt of the earth. Uh, this match got the crowd buzzing to end the show. MJF with a 93, Matt Cardona with an 88, Chucky T and Trent in the high 60s. And that means the best broskies are entered into that four-way tag team match, taking on Aussie Open, High Five, and the Combat Club. Winners will get an AEW World Tag Team title opportunity. In post-match, uh, MJF and Matt Cardona hug it out, just like the best friends probably would have if they won. Uh, Steph Delanda is also there, who they celebrate with, and they are heading to the Grand Prix Final. And that is how we finish this one, guys. Let's see how we did. An 89. I'll take it. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's probably helped massively by that main event match. As well as, you know, we've got some really good segments uh, all throughout here. You know, hyping up Cargill Shida, that should be a really good match. We've now got that four-way tag team added to the card. And, um, sorry, just hit my mic then. And Brian Danielson and Daniel Garcia's rematch is an ultimate submission match, which I'm hoping, crossing everything, is going to be fucking awesome. Um... But yeah, let's end it here. We've got Collision to book in the next one. And then we are here, finally, at the All-In Grand Prix Final. But as I just said, Collision is first. Um, and that is the next episode to look forward to. So with that, thank you very much, guys. Please like, comment, subscribe, share. And I will see you all in the next one.